30 years ago, the Iron Curtain started falling in Eastern Europe. Poland was the first country of the Eastern Bloc that initiated democratic change. The first partially free elections that took place in 1989 were won by the anti-communist movement Solidarity, led by Lech Walesa. This electrician by profession became the leader of the Polish struggle against the communist authorities. Now, people all over the world vote for politicians that promise changes too. But politicians were unable to offer good solutions at the time. Solidarity was founded nine years before the 1989 elections in the northern Polish city of Gdańsk. At that time, local shipbuilders and other businesses in the city staged mass strikes to force in the government to legalize independent trade unions. Solidarity was the very first one. In no time at all, people in the city have learned about it. I was told by my husband, whose father worked in the shipyard, as a medical doctor and he has found him and told him that the strike has started and that we absolutely have to see it. So I couldn't understand in the beginning being a student why is it so absolutely necessary for us to see it and my, my husband who has already seen it told me time you couldn't you buy paper for even for typewriting without special documents showing that you are uh, a writer, a journalist, or a scientist. My mother was a scientist. We have paper at home, so that was the first thing I have brought uh, to the shipyard. Solidarity had a simple philosophy. If you can't handle the burden, it's okay, ask someone to help. And the burden was heavy, the Soviet Union and communism. The workers have decided uh, to negotiate with the government representatives and the great uh, success was that the government has decided to talk to the strikers. Among the demands were recognition of independent trade unions, adherence to freedom of expression and press, reinstatement in jobs of those fired for participation in the strikes of 1970 and 1976, reinstatement of students who were expelled from universities for their views, release of political prisoners. The government, led by Mieczysław Jagielski, agreed to the strikers' demands. The agreement, signed on the 31st of August 1980, was labeled the August Agreement. Thus, officially began Solidarity's story. In the first weeks of the movement's existence, more than 10 million Poles joined it. However, legally Solidarity only existed for 16 months. In December of 1981, the Prime Minister of the Polish People's Republic, Wojciech Jaruzelski, declared martial law in the country. Officially, because of the danger of invasion of Soviet troops, Solidarity goes underground and its members are persecuted. In 1983, the martial law was lifted and the strikes resumed. The most wide-scale ones took place in May and August of 1988. So. Mm, we were tired, but the government, the authorities were also tired. And um, after the waves of strikes in 1988, they have decided to talk. In the end, the communist government agreed to the first partially free elections in June 1989. As a result, Solidarity won 99 out of 100 seats in the newly created Senate, Upper House of the Parliament, and 160 seats out of 161 in the same Lower House. Our generation got caught up in the middle. Our era came to an end, another one had not yet been built. I would call this era in between the age of words. And the beginning was the word, and the word was made flesh. And this word should have come into the discussion. What should Poland be like? What should Ukraine be like? And what should Europe be like? The events from 30 years ago are proudly remembered in Poland today. To preserve the memory of Solidarity's struggle, a European Solidarity Center was opened in 2007. In 2014, it moved to a new building. Its frame is made of sheet steel, used in shipbuilding. It is unpainted and rusty. Inside, there is a library, an archive, a research center, and a museum of history of solidarity. And on this wall, visitors leave comments. <laughs> what can we read? First of all, these are people who say what solidarity gave everyone in Poland. 
It gave freedom, and people just write thanks to solidarity for freedom. Children also choose to write what information they received. This is important for children because they might not know this story. Sometimes they don't know it. They want to talk about it. When they meet people who lived in the 80s who took part in the strikes, these meetings are very interesting for them, because they had never met such people. They have a lot of questions. We have um, so many famous people from Poland and, and we are happy about our past. It's wow, so it starts here in Poland. 30 years ago, the Poles demonstrated unprecedented unity in the struggle against the communist dictatorship. But many believe that democracy is now in jeopardy in Poland because of the government policy which the opposition and the EU view as authoritarian. These demagogues, like Trump, like the ones we have, like those in France, make the right diagnosis. They say we need to fix everything, change everything. Instead, they do not offer the right recipes. They offer unsuccessful solutions for the sake of a change. This is the problem we see. That spirit of the August 1980, it was a very beautiful moment in history when not, not only we uh, felt that we could be better even than we actually are, and I think it was a great success of Lech Wałęsa as a leader, that he was bringing out in people what was best in them. Solidarity was the movement of the streets that rebelled against the political class. The history of its struggle can also act as an inspiration for Poland's modern civil society, 